99.3 Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info. Welcome to the you're welcome to the daily digest with Jimmy Disu. And today is Friday and um, my promise to you has been fulfilled. I have with me a, you know a, a, a soldier, you know, a soldier and a gentleman. I'm sorry if I keep stuttering, I'm a bit overwhelmed here. This is somebody that I respect so much and was a one time governor of Lagos State. Um, the memories of his time are not forgotten and not lost on a lot of us. Don't worry, General, we won't talk politics as <laughs> much this morning. It's my pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Marwa, and he's the director, he's the chairman sir, of the NDLEA. Good morning, General. How are you? Very well. I'm glad to be here. It's nice to see you nice and fresh. I thought, <laughs> I thought you'd be worn out by, by the, prob the problems of the job. I, I, I just wonder, General, uh, just a quick aside, uh, we had thought, some of us had thought that um, at some point we'd see you vying for president. You know what, those of us who are in public affairs here, we have some people we pinpoint to say that, okay, maybe Marwa would come, maybe Fashola would come, maybe this would come. You never thought of it. We, we have different ways of contributing to, to the country. To the country. Like, like, like I am doing now in the in war against drug abuse and trafficking. Yes, but did it ever cross your mind? Oh yes, we tried at a point. At a point, but it wasn't. Uh, um, it was more complicated than we thought. I the see whole, the whole uh, business. I, I see. W would you ever think of it in the future, though? Absolutely not. Yes, yes. So, are you inclined to think that it's something for young people? Does it have to do with age? Or you just don't want to think about it anymore. Uh, in my own case, in my own case, yes, uh, part of it has to do with age. Part of it, age. In my own opinion, mm -hmm. but age, uh, in general terms, yes, has less to do with it. With it, competence, it's, it's more yes. to do with competence. Yes, it's more to do with competence, patriotism. Uh, and a deep and abiding sincerity and patriotism. Not age. But for me, mm -hmm. personally, uh, as a uh, Mohammed Marwa, I think I'm too old to run. Too old to run, yes. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. I mean, fair enough. That's 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 uh, so I I am just wondering, did, did you become NDLEA by accident NDLA chairman by accident or did you ever have this passion in the first instance? that, oh, if I have the chance, I'll contribute to eradicating this menace that we have? Actually, the correct answer to that question will probably be provided by the president himself, who appointed me. Yes. But I can uh, give a little inkling that before the appointment, as you know, I was chairman of the presidential advisory committee yes. for the elimination of drug abuse, uh, which was a 27... Uh, member committee uh, that was tasked with bringing recommendations to the president <coughs> on how to eliminate drug abuse in Nigeria. Uh, we did submit the report, we gave our own blueprint, um, our own recommendations, and I would only um, speculate that that had an important uh, sort of impact mm -hmm. in, in the appointment. But before that, I had had an abiding interest in the whole issue of drug abuse and treatment. Because if you recall, while I served with the Lagos State Government, we had this uh, situation with area boys and girls. Yes. In their thousands. Yes. Um, we did treat them initially as petty criminals. We send them off to magistrates who tried and imprisoned or, you know, gave various sentences for some of the 
uh, criminal activities, you know, plucking trinkets from women on the street and, and stuff. Hmm. But eventually, um, I decided it was deeper than that. The situation uh, had to do with, with drug use and addiction. And so we faced the criminalization out and put up the rehab center in Isheri, which is still running. Okay. And through that means thousands of these street urchins were treated. And on top of that, we gave them skills. Because one of the issues around drug abuse has to do with poverty. Mm -hmm. And so if you treat an addict who became addicted through um, the idleness and the frustration that comes along with poverty, and then you have uh, a situation because you send him back to the same environment, he will mm. fail into the, uh, fall into the same uh, criteria. So we give them skills and we also give them startup capitals uh, and that's why we are able to sustain that. So, so yeah, I, I've had that uh, passion. Well, well, we talked about area boys, but I think recent recent uh, reports and observations show that it's moved up from the streets up into the elite. Um, it, it looks as if quite a large number of our elites are into drug addiction. Before we even take the crime side of things, that a lot of our elites are into drug addiction. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. It was reported one time that you said that you would love to test whoever runs for office for drug usage and so on and so forth. I think that's how bad, you know, one's perception of the problem is. How, how do you intend to tackle that, sir? Well, first of all, about the drug uh, test that I mentioned, it was a suggestion. Yes. Because it's not the law. It's not the law, no. It's, it's, it's the suggestion that uh, office seekers public office seekers or public appointees by government at all levels from mm. the councillor all the way to the top ought to be tested and cleared negative before they are passed to run or given uh, appointment because these positions of public offices are position of public trust and there are lots of public funds involved and you give an addict a position he's going to blow the money on cocaine yeah uh, to start with, it's not to mention the position of his brain in, in mm. uh, judgmentally in, in yes. taking the right decisions to run the office. So we did put that out, and uh, it was misconstrued in some quarters. But I know for a fact that there's a private member's bill from the chairman of the Narcotics uh, Drug Committee in the House of Reps who is pushing for it to become law. Hmm. And it's not completely out of the air that we plucked it. It's happening in some places. For instance, in Kano State, no one gets appointed into any position in Kano State, including the traditional institution. I see. Without being declared drug free. Yes, drug negative. But you, you must have seen something that brought that about. You must have, something must have told you that, look, there's some infiltration going on here. You know, just like I said earlier on, sir, that it, has, it seems to have moved up to the elite. Um, most of the clubs, the lounges, the big money drugs. These are the big boys that are, that are doing well for gender equation and girls <laughs> that, are, that are doing these things. And, and it's worrying because, f fair enough, even if we did it for public officers, even in the private sector, even in the military, everywhere, you know, um, I, I saw a video of, I think it was in Kenya or Kenya or Cameroon, you know, of an officer on patrol who, has, uh, as we saw on the streets, he was standing correct, completely dazed, with a weapon in his hand. So I, I, think, I think that you, you might want to push for it to be done across the board, you know. Yeah. Maybe even, even in our own profession, before you open up the mic for the man, make sure he doesn't go and say the wrong <laughs> Well, you know, we're encouraging um, throughout uh, our society in mm. workplaces, in tertiary institutions, and down to secondary schools now, 
uh, armed forces, like you said, you can't give somebody a weapon. Yes. And he is intoxicated with drugs because there will be accidental discharges everywhere. People, will, innocent people, will be killed. So eventually, let me tell you where we are moving this year is to provide drug test kits in sufficient numbers for parents within their own homes hmm. be able to buy and test their kids. Kids. And the kids themselves will know that daddy or mommy has this thing. It, it mo that is frightening. It's it must very be important. very rampant. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Well, it is. It is. We have um, from the 2018 survey about 15 million Nigerians between the ages of 15 wow. and 64 who are doing drugs. Now, that's a very terrible... Yes. And you can, as you have mentioned, uh, millions of our youth, families have been dislocated, communities everywhere because of drug use. Now, let me touch a little bit on the elites. Yes. Even though they are not in the majority uh, that are doing drugs because... Um, Unfortunately, those who do drugs in the majority are low class because of poverty. Poverty. So there are two things that push the elites. First, people think when you have money, that's contentment and happiness. Hmm. But that's not, not necessarily so. And you have those who are very wealthy, still they are not happy and hmm. feel that the only way for them to be happy uh, is to take drugs. And secondly, it's just, even if they are happy, you have the, ca the, the, the category that I believe is part of the class. Yes. It's the in thing, you have to have those lounges, you have to do stuff to belong. And, and it's part of the enjoyment <laughs> of life. So, so the, you have those categories. But we continue to advocate that it does you no good, good. to take drugs, something that damages the brain, the organs, and even kills. It's very, very uh, important, and, and we are pushing, we are pushing, we are pushing. Do, I, I'd like to know where your tendency lies, to see it, to see drugs as a societal problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. To see it as a societal problem or as a crime, which is a, which takes more of your focus? Both. Both. Both um, possession of drugs is already in our acts as a crime. Hmm. Now it is left for us in the NDLA to determine when you possess, what is your intention? Is it to use or is it to deal? Uh, both, it, it really it doesn't matter. But we have our own standing operating procedure. Uh, when we d determine that, it will lead us into taking the correct action. But we tend to be sympathetic to drug use. When you use yes. drugs, yes. and it is really beyond your control, uh, it becomes a disease. And in that case, you need help. And so we promote going to our counseling and rehab centers. And it is for this reason that we have the 24-7 helpline. Um, we have this helpline especially geared towards those who either don't know where to go to get help or they don't want to go mm. to get help so that people don't see them. You know, the mm, stigma. Yes, stigma. People don't want to go. Uh, and, and get help. And the, the thing is, Lagos, I must say very clearly, has the highest prevalence rates in Nigeria. The prevalence in Lagos states, and this is evidence-based, stands at 33% between the ages of 15 and 64. Now that is frightening. So if you look at the uh, population of Lagos, if you say it's 25 million or so, then we are really talking like 4 million. That's a very high, very, very high. high number. Um, and most of that, a very high proportion of that, 
uh, is cannabis, which is used, uh, it is smoked, it is drunk, it is eaten, you know, it's inhaled, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, so this is uh, an area that uh, demands urgent attention and whole society participation. Generally, you mentioned cannabis, but it would appear that apparently people don't think that is much of an offense to be caught with cannabis. Cannabis is smoked, you know, left, right, and not just cannabis, too. There are other funny smelling, uh, <laughs> I've lost track of them. Uh, everybody seems to think that um, if it's cannabis, it doesn't catch the attention of the NDLEA. Rather, they look at cocaine, crack, heroin, and all these other things. So invariably, to clear for those who are listening, if you are caught smoking cannabis in public or in private, you are committing an offense. It's a crime in Nigeria. Okay. It's in our act, and we deal with anyone that we catch with cannabis. You don't even need to be smoking it. Once you are in possession of it, that's a crime, and you face the music. But as I said, we also have a standard operating procedure where after we make the arrests, we determine the appropriate action that mm. we must take. Mm. We have gone out um, to destroy cannabis plantations. In the last two <laughs> years, we've destroyed, I believe, about 784 hectares. Because wow. we have to go back to the forests. Last week alone, we were able to destroy 317 tons in the warehouses deep, deep in Edo State uh, jungles. So cannabis is bad. Nobody should be under any illusion that it is something, because I've heard there were some times um, some people were trying to legalize it in Nigeria. Yeah. It won't happen. Certainly not uh, while I'm in the NDLA. NDLA. Because why would you take a knife and stab yourself with it? You, you already know this is a drug, a full class A drug that affects the brain. It damages the brain. The World Health Organization itself accepts that. All the psychiatrist uh, associations accept that. This is something that affects behavior. You get crazy after a while. In the society, we all know. Mm. Igbo. Mm. We can't have it. Nigeria must never be a cannabis uh, uh, country. We won't, we won't have it. And now, look at it. In the World Drug Report 2021, there was a prediction that in the next 30 years or so, that's 2021, the drug abuse rate in the, in the, in the world will increase by about 10, 11%. But that in Africa, 40% increase. Wow, because of poverty. Poverty and because of availability and access to, to cannabis, which is the cheapest available drug because we grow it here. Yes. So we can't, with this type of information, which is scientific, lay back. We have to stand up and go after it. The most important thing in the drug supply reduction chain is to deny its access and availability to the users. And that's why you see the NDLEA going everywhere, in the airports, in the seaports, on the highways, uh, workplaces, forests, you know, to seize drugs. First, that will deny its availability, because if you don't have drugs, you can't use it. You have, you have to mm. have drugs first. And also to teach, lesson, to teach lessons to those who are dealing in it. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, General. I, I need to take a short break sure. uh, so that you can relax a bit. I've been speaking to Brigadier General Buba Marwa, you know, the chairman of NDLA. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we'll continue and then we'll open up the lines for you to ask your questions and give your comments. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Yeah. 
Liverpool. It's Alexander Rado! <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool are majestic! You can't coach against them! City have to defend for six minutes. They do not want to attack this. Felon Mendy across into the penalty area, headed down by the Madrid players. Still Madrid hopping around City's penalty box. A chance could come for them. It's 1 1 on the night. It's 4 5 for Nabi. Get the head it up. Is it worth it? 2 2. Wow. They are back. Incredible. Well, one of the great nights um, as a radio football commentator, certainly. Uh, was special, it was special. You could sense it, I like, literally could sense um, a potential comeback and it wasn't a surprise that it happened but you know, how I was still able to articulate my words after that goal came in, uh, something magical. So, one of those great minds. It's Alexander Rado! <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool are majestic, you can't coach against this. I'm a soccer for trends. You know, if he wasn't a Liverpool player, I would wear a jersey with Trent at the back. Um, that was special. It was a free kick from about 38, 40 yards against Chelsea. A team I you know, somehow didn't fancy. Um, it was special and I fell off the seat. It's a classic. I don't think any commentator has been able to do that. To keep you... Every day is a new experience for me here. Yeah. And I get, I mean, look, see how excited I was coming into this studio. It was like a kid in a candy shop. What I enjoy doing the most here, let me put it in my own words, is dear Bumi, because it's relaxing, it's hilarious. Um, and of course, I, I, for the life of me, I would never miss um, doing programs with Sheriff in the morning. It's one of the best, that's what keeps me uh, alive and going. I think the one that I would remember the most, uh, believe you me, is the one I did with Made Kuti, uh, Femi's son. Um, every time I looked at, you know, every time I think of the young guy, I feel so inspired. Because I'm always thinking of tomorrow. I'm youth driven. I'm not saying I'm a youth though, <laughs> but I'm youth driven. Oh, the best thing about being a radio show host is when people hold your hand in public, they pray for you, they send you messages and appreciate what you're doing. Because it's, apart from it being a big job, it's a sacrifice if you want to do this job well. It is a big, big sacrifice. I'm not known to be a liar. I'm, I'm somebody who, and the reason why, why I don't lie about such things is I don't want to be caught out. Okay, so if I overslept, you hear me on radio saying, sorry I came late, I overslept. I don't want anybody telling me that this is what happened. You know, I'm very conscious of that. So I don't think I ever lied not to be on air. I'd have called ahead to say, uh, because I'm a professional to the core, and you can ask those who work with me. If I can't make it, sometimes I'd call Sheriff in the morning and say, Sheriff, oh, let me. I'm tired. If I'm tired, I'm tired, you know. So I don't think I've been caught out as such. I can't remember any time. <laughs> Cowbell is evaporated milk is delicious milk that is carefully formulated to retain its creaminess and great taste. Cowbell evaporated milk, so creamy, so good. Move must be made. My people just to work hard. Dreams and challenges must be thinked of. But sometimes, when the journey gets tiring, all we need is something to push our limits. Reactor Energy Drink. What you need to push your limits. Push your limits. Our country won the bar. Go do one for us.
to be delivered. Mama saves the day. Lunch is here. Mom, I got some coke too. Just come and eat, Joe. <laughs> Cook up memorable moments because family lunch and an ice cold coke make a recipe for wonder. Coca-Cola. Real wonder. Guy, I'm in front of your household. What is this I'm looking at? How fun. Last, last night, you did change at the bureau. <laughs> Wait, was me two days ago that you bought your car? Uh -huh. And now you're driving another one? Oh boy, now blessings on blessings on blessings. Hey! You just upgraded like that. Guy, I beg, be quiet. Is that how people buy cars? It's the car my insurance company, Axa Mansa, gave me while my car is getting fixed. Hey, it's a lie who Axa Mansa gave you makeshift car. Yeah. The same company that took your car to better auto shop all within 24 hours. This guy. Why you don't show me the way before my insurance company make me pack car? For three months, they jump bus round the goals. <laughs> Axa Mentor Moto Insurance is the one-time insurance feels like an upgrade and leaves you wanting to say thank you for what you truly deserve. Visit www.axamentor.com or call 0700 Axa Mentor today. Axa Mentor. Big protein breakfast. That's the secret. To how mom wakes up early, makes breakfast for us, and runs off to work. How daddy works most nights and still gets up early to drop me at school. No matter how busy they are, they're never too tired to play with me. And that's because they never leave home without a peak protein breakfast. Start every day with a peak breakfast enriched with protein to keep you going. Peak. Rich for your peak. Where something correct to go show, we go see our way. the correct team of Kola Abiola and Haro Zago for president and vice president. PRP Victory! Welcome back to your number one talk, news, and sports station. This is Nigeria in the Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Daily Digest with Jimmy Disney. Welcome back to the Daily Digest with Jimmy Disu, and it's still my pleasure to, to have in the studios with me Brigadier General Marwa, who is chairman of the NDLA. I'd like to know, as I've said this at the beginning, but you know that we're on YouTube and we're also on Facebook Live, so you can actually see what's going on here. I'll continue my discussion with the general, and at some point, we will allow questions and reactions, and the rules will apply, more so in this one. The rules will apply. Let's stick to the topic. Let's uh, let's be civil, and that one-minute rule will not be bent because we are running out of time as it is. 
One of the things that worries me, sir, is um, on the crime side, is the kind of cooperation we get from the judiciary. Uh, is possession of drugs, is, is it a bailable offense? It is. Is that a problem for you? It depends <coughs> on the case in question. Okay. Obviously, we argue against bail more vociferously um, the more complicated it gets. Yes. For instance, when you seize 13 million uh, pills of tramadol, hmm. you know you don't want the criminal to be granted bail because he would interfere with the, ca with the with evidence. The case outside. Um, but if it's um, a kilogram, let us say, mm. of cannabis, yes, um, and they argue bail, um, won't have uh, much uh, complaint about that if it is granted. Um, so it depends on, on the case. And that said, we are getting a lot of support from the judiciary, from you know, judiciary. the federal high court. Um, there was indeed a time when we raised concerns about the fines. Yes. The fines we observed in some cases were too little to be, in our own opinion, most respectfully, of any d uh, value uh, to deter the criminals. For instance, you give a fine of 5,000 naira. Hmm. The guy will pay right there, there and continue with his habit. Yes. Um, I certainly led a delegation to the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court and made a representation on some of these issues. But as I said in summary, um, we are quite satisfied. The Federal High Court, uh, the, the, we, are, we are working in partnership. And yes, the, our new act, which is under amendment, we believe uh, when it is out, this option of fine will be out. Exactly. And so it's going to be stiff jail sentences. Mm. So there will be a lesson. And in, on top of that, we are getting a lot of support from the judiciary on forfeitures. Because most of the dealers and the barons, as you know, they do the business because of money, easy money. Yeah, the, the business of drugs is awash. I can't think of any other business on earth hmm. that has... Uh, so much money. It's very lucrative and so they're able to take chance and some are prepared to serve jail sentences provided they go home after the sentence and their wealth is waiting for them. It's waiting for them. So we go double. We go I, I don't know if you have heard mm -hmm. that in Nigeria you can hire people to run your sentences for you. Have you ever heard anything like that? We've heard about it during the Pasida. <laughs> yes. Um, but that was in the long past. Okay. In the long in the correctional Lula. services now are more efficient, mm. and um, this doesn't happen anymore, to the best of my knowledge. Do you remember there was a time under this current president when drug dealers were shot? I wonder what you felt then, and now that you're the chairman of NDLA, I wonder what you think of that time. You are in service then, of course. Yes, I was. Yes. Um, <clears throat> even though uh, during the tenure of uh, then General Muhammad Buhari. Yes. I was a student in, uh, in the U.S. Okay. Uh, pursuing my university education. But I was following these things. Uh, the best practices now, and with our collaboration um, with international partners, the issue of death penalty is out for Nigeria. Okay. But as I said, the new amendment has stiffened the sentences, the jail sentences. Mm. Uh, and also the enforcement in terms of for features, uh, which are sufficient. Some people, indeed some countries have, um, would I say out of frustration, decided that, okay, look, as far as usage is concerned, uh, rather than criminalize it, why don't you manage it, uh, legalize it up to a point and manage it? I, I wonder what you think of that. The, the, would that be some good tactics to deploy in a country like ours? It depends on the countries 
Um, as I said, we have an SOP in which we determine what to do after the arrest, having determined if the person arrested is a user or not. Okay. Um, but we have to be very careful. Circumstances are different. Some of these countries in the West that have legalized it, there are so many uh, social systems that support people. So the, the, when they use drugs there, it is not exactly because of wanton poverty, like mm. in our own case. So we can't do exactly what they are doing there. there. And so if in Nigeria, for instance, you say completely it is decriminalized, I just mentioned 4 million, didn't I? Yes. yes. You yes. can be sure in 60 days, that number will triple to 12 million. Because once you know it's decriminalized, it's not an offense, I can do my journal anyhow, mm. they will go for it because of the prevailing circumstance of poverty and so on. So you now have a 4 million prevalence still with the fear of being arrested. So you are taking it you, with that fear yes. that there, there, there could be a sanction on you if you are arrested. So if we were to say no sanctions, go ahead, it's not a criminal activity, so it won't work in Nigeria. And this mm. part I made very clear in the last uh, heads of drug law enforcement agencies uh, of Africa meeting in Kenya uh, last year. I, I made this very, very clear that we have to be careful with this decriminalization. It will not work everywhere. It won't be an even template. But we, who are in the front line on this war, we will determine what to do mm. at the point of contact. Let me, let me, something uh, bothers me from a very narrow perspective. You know, I'm, I'm not an NDLA operative. I'm not security minded. But there seem to be, for what Yoruba has call a query, who doesn't know anything, we would think that there are some places that are easily identifiable as hotspots for drug, for narcotics, that continue to exist in areas like Ujuno, Mushin, you know, almost the same buildings. I wonder why you haven't um, tried to cross them completely, you know, cross them completely and take them out. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a very important uh, let me tell you now, yes. and I'm happy Nigerians are listening. Yes. I have all the dr drug joints in the country. Local you know where they are. I know where they are. We know where they are. However, when you implement policy, you have to be careful also of what is it that you can achieve. That is why we are increasing the strength of the because you need men on, wow. the, uh, on the ground to be able to do certain things you, you have to have the manpower they have to be equipped to carry out the tasks and so we've put under 5,000 men in uniform last year another 5,000 coming so this hmm. will be dispersed down to the grassroots to be able to have greater impact. Impact. And they go after some of these. That said, that said, we are paying greater attention at the barons, the people yes. that are on top of the cartels. Yes. Because those people in the joints, they receive, they have a line of supply, they have a chain. And so when you hit the baron himself, that disrupts that and eventually when they don't have anything coming they fizzle out mm -hmm. so um i use this uh, opportunity to sound a very serious warning that we know where all of you are all of the all yes, the places we know and we're going to get to them so we appeal instead of waiting for us to to seize arrest and send to jail just quit the profession and look for something else that said we have in the last two years been able to arrest about 34 barons. 
Yes, I, I how did that come cold. about, though? I, I don't want to inject your predecessors, but how did you get to this high-profile arrest, you, you know, arrest? Intelligence. We are intelligence-driven. We have tools. Our officers are professional, and we work in partnerships also with the international, you know, we work with the DEA. Yes. We work with the German criminal police. We work with the French uh, police. We work with Saudi, the general director of narcotics. Um, I've just come back from India where I went to, because that's one of the sources of uh, the opioids. Mm, the problems, yes. yes. So <coughs> we, we are intelligence driven. Now there's uh, more training in the agency for the people to be at the cutting edge of their profession. And so when the barons go about their business like before, they better know that the NDLE has changed. Do you do you um <coughs> do your men confront danger? Are they the barons, for example, uh, are they getting more brazen? Um like like you see in movies like in Colombia, some of them even have armies. Uh, do you have any experience of that here? Yeah? Are we getting anywhere? Close to that. Absolutely. Wow. Because the cartels, they're international. Mm. And when you see 2.1 tons of cocaine, mm. like we did last year, we know for a fact that it wasn't a local affair. It, it, it has to be linked to Latin America. Mm. Um, so we have the same challenges here. We lose gallant uh, officers. Even last week, we lost one. Oh my God! Um, in an operation, when the community, the cartels now, especially in the deep forests, they look after the communities in vital commerce. Mm. They build them schools, uh, scholarships, health clinics, you know, and arm them because they are their farmers. And so when the NDLA wow. moves in. We get resistance. It's like we are coming to take away the milk All from the there. goodies. Aha. And they attack us. But we're up to it. No question about it. Mm. We are getting more arms, more equipment. The president has approved armored vans so that our men will operate um, in a secure environment. We are getting more tools, uh, equipment. And uh, so in answer to the question, the challenge yes. is there, um, but we are confronting it. And I must say also, uh, happily, that the president is well seized of this matter. Hmm. And that is why he approved barracks for us. We are the last agency to have barracks. Yes. Just uh, two months ago, in one of the states, one of our officers was raided by, by uh, these drug criminals. He escaped, but they picked his family. Hmm. And in the ensuing phone call, they, they were very clear that that man in particular was giving them a lot of so, uh, worries. Because you, you still have another two years to go, sir. Am I right? Um, Your tenure is four years. Five, actually. Five. Uh, so you must be praying that you have uh, a drug-intolerant president uh, from May next for May this year. You must and, be doing that. And I'm sure we will get a drug intolerant, intolerant president. Yes, president. Because there is no president that will come and see it and not be seized of the issues that is destroying millions of our children and mm. the whole country and giving mm. us a bad name. Okay. Things are now moving up. We've seized... 5,700 tons in two years. Imagine if that was on the street, hmm. how that would have uh, gone round. 500 billion naira worth. Wow. Both in cash and value. This, this money. Wow. So if this had gone in... Well, I wish I had more time, but I can take just two phone calls very quickly. Hello. Hello. That's, that, you, you are not calling from a good place. Let's have another one. Hello. Good morning, Ogajimi. Morning, quickly, please. Lucky Lola from Maguru. Yes. Yes, talking about um, equipment and every other thing. Yes. In the news a few weeks ago, we heard that your agency is trying to you know, get this new fast dog, which costs nothing less than $15,000 to $20,000. I want to ask, 
can't it be got it from another country at a cheaper price? And is there no other machi um, machinery or tools you and your agency can use to achieve your aim? Oh, okay, Bye -bye. So uh, when he's talking of um, sniffer dogs, he's wondering whether you can use the local bingos. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, but very quickly, let me... Thank yes. you very much for the question. Yes. Yeah, there was a little uh, misconception during the budget defense last year. We are not buying any sniffer drugs. Okay. It's just a mention that I made for people to be aware that it okay. cost fifteen thousand uh, dollars in the process. Yes. Our sniffer dogs come from Germany. The German criminal police they have been equipping us with, with the sniffer dogs. dogs. Yes, so we are not buying. That's important uh, for my <laughs> caller to be aware. And we can't use the local and, bingos. And, we can't send them. Uh, no, unfortunately, because this, this, they are trained for about 200 different, uh, you know, uh, drugs mm. and, and stuff, explosives mm. and so on. And finally, the machines are available also, and we have some. In fact, the name of the machine is called Sniffer. Oh, okay. Sniffer Dog. That's the name of the machine mm -hmm. also, which we are using. So we have the combination of these. And uh, uh, there's a dog training school being constructed by the Germans. Yeah. Yes. Ah, that's good. Let's take our last call for the day. <phone rings> Oops. Hello. Hello. Morning. Hello. Hello. Morning. Let's take another one. Hello. Morning. Yeah, good morning, Uncle Jimmy. Quickly, please. I have just one minute. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that the... the mm, I mean, your guest is saying that. I mean, if there, if if another if I, there's another elected president that comes in, that is going to work with him and things like that, that is, they're not going to legalize it. But somebody like Sean Ore, one of the presidential aspirants, says that if he's voted into power, that is going to legalize drug. Okay. So can you can your guest you know say something about that? I, I'm not sure he said so though. I don't have the evidence that he said so. Are you following this campaign, you know, um, to know who is saying what? So, um, you, the caller, uh, would you like it to be legalized? He's gone. Oh, okay. He's gone, yes. Uh, I would just give the message that he should then pray against any candidate <laughs> who has declared <laughs> that he's going to legalize. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, General, we've got to go. It's been nice having you. Uh, it's a personal pleasure. And I can tell you that you broke the social media. People will have been expecting you. I need to extract a promise that you come here again, sir. Because we have only scratched the surface. Sometime, maybe after the elections, when the heat is down, we'll be glad to have you back. I would love to come back. Yes, sir. That's very nice. I'd Thank love you very to come much. Back. Right. Okay, gentle ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're going to draw the curtains. Um, it's been nice talking to the general. Uh, if I didn't ask the questions that you thought I would ask, I couldn't have done that in an hour anyway. I could engage him for three, four hours. Uh, but he has a schedule to meet and that he came all the way from Abuja for this uh, program, amongst other things. It's quite uh, pleasing. One more time, sir. Keep up the good work. Uh, some Thank of us who have been following you back in the day, we are so proud of you. And on behalf of uh, Lagosians, we'd like to thank you for your time as governor in Lagos. I cannot but say that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll be back tomorrow, 9 o'clock at the discourse. And in the meantime, stay tuned for What's Up Lagos. Don't touch that dial. <laughs>